Hi, I'm Gina with Active Cities Magazine, and today we're going to step inside the Boulder Center for Sports Medicine to learn a little bit more about a service they offer their clients called a video gait analysis. I'm standing here with Tim Hilden, and Tim, um, today you're going to put me through a gait analysis evaluation, uh, just one of the services that is offered at the Boulder Center for Sports Medicine. And before we get started, if you could just quickly tell me what is the main purpose behind getting a gait analysis? What can people hope to learn from it? Well, the main purpose of getting the gait analysis done is to really look at the mechanics of how you move. It's one thing to have you come in as a patient and take a look at your injury and, and treat your symptoms, but for runners to really get at the cause of why you hurt and or why your performance is, is uh, lagging at this point, we really want to break down the mechanics of how you move frame by frame and develop strategies to then change those mechanics so we can stop uh, exploiting the tissues and joint structures that cause your pain. Okay, and we had talked earlier, you know, I've been running for over 24 years. I'm very much a recreational runner. I don't do much else but running, a little bit of cycling, and I do have some hamstring um, tightness going on. So when we get into this test, it'll be interesting for me to see, you know, what I can be doing differently to ward off any injuries because I am afraid at this point I'm training right. for a marathon and I'm going from running you know three miles at a stretch to a lot more than that so let's get started Before we started doing um, the evaluation on the treadmill, mm -hmm. you had taken me back into the room and done a physical exam of sorts. Yes. You would ask me questions. I told you I had um, history of low back issues and that most recently I had hamstring problems, that, which basically I was unable to, um, when I'm running, I feel like I'm not getting my full stride. Mm -hmm. I feel like things are very tight and controlled. So what I first do is I like you to just take a look at how you look while you run and kind of get a feel because this isn't what you normally get to see. Okay. And I really care about kind of the rhythm and symmetry of how you look, not necessarily looking at specific things, but just what does it feel like as you're going through the, uh, as, while you're running. Then I'll break things down and, and take a look at it in more detail. And certainly one of the first things that stands out is a little bit of the abrupt motion that happens in the pelvis and that it's moving a lot. Back when we were doing the physical evaluation we talked about the glute strength and the influence in, uh, of that on your gait. This is part of what I was wondering if I was going to see or not, is, is whether you're going to have this extra movement going on in the pelvis because the muscles aren't necessarily stabilizing it. We're going to look at a lot of other issues but that may be a primary one relative to this pelvic motion. So. What I want to do is start at the top and work our way down. First thing I do is take a look at the shoulders and say, okay, are you fairly level? Do you lean your body a lot one side versus the other? What's going on up top? You don't lean a lot side to side. You ro get some rotation going on in your body, but you're not someone that comes into single leg stance and is dramatically leaning. Now, let's take a look at your arms. What I care with the arms is, First of all, I look to see how much crossover do you have. Are you coming across like Popeye? Or are you running like this, like Robot Girl? And the reason we care about the arms, even though you have a hamstring problem, is that anything you do in one half of your body, the other half has to stay in sync with. So if you were to go, uh, if you were to have a real long, lopy stride, your arms have to stay in sync with that. If you go short and choppy, same thing. If you turn a lot, the legs have to figure out what to do with that, with counter rotating. And no matter how hard you try, you cannot violate that principle. So we care about what's going on up on top because it may be causing a problem in the hamstrings. If your arms don't necessarily cross in front of your body excessively, you like to bring them to the sides and you have a little bit of a trail runner carriage of your arms, which you see a lot more throughout this front range where people tend to hold their arms out to the side a little bit more because they're used to trail running and they're going to react to what's on the trail. Road runners typically don't have to react to much of anything and so they bring their arms down here and they just settle in and all the trail runners are out here and you're you show me more of a trail runner mechanics than you do a road and mechanics. that's where I run the most yeah. on trails. and so it's just a habituation 
But when your arms are coming back here, what I'm looking for is, you know, whether you kick back too much and rotate a lot, again, inducing rotation in the trunk. But you're not doing that. The distance between the center of your elbow and the side of your body looks pretty reasonable. You do different things with each arm. This arm, you like to kind of do the windshield wiper effect, bringing it out to the side, whereas your other arm comes more cleanly back. This, I think, has more to do with some of your low back alignment and your pelvic alignment because you stand a little rotated towards your left hand side when you're up on the treadmill walking or running your your pelvis is rotated towards the left hand side if you look straight down your back you're sitting like this all the time that then skews where your arms are going to be and so we'd expect that if you're a little bit rotated left that i'm going to see a little bit more of that left arm let's pan back out and take a look at the entire uh, lower body I'm going to drop a plumb line down and take a look at some of the alignment of that entire leg as that leg's coming towards us. So if I drop this right down through about middle of the buttock and down, what I should expect to see is that we would be about dead center of knee like we are or a little to the outside. Watch the back of this knee as this leg comes towards us and see how well it tracks on this reference line. It should come, and it is, right back at us. Shouldn't be knock kneeing, bow legging, and rotating anything. And it comes back at us uh, nicely. I will point out something you do with rotation at the very end, but from a side to side perspective, you're pretty stable. What doesn't stay controlled, again, is going back up into this pelvis. Now, some of that movement should happen, but it's the magnitude of the motion and how quickly the motion happens. It's very abrupt. That can, exactly, and it should be more like two frames, you know, kind of ease into it versus slamming into it. So we know that the pelvis moves too much, although the knees are, are tracking fairly well. One of the more common, I guess, combinations would be someone who collapses at the pelvis and then drops the knee in as well and rotates the thigh in, and again, yanking on the IT band setting you up for patellofemoral alignment issues, patellar tendon, hip and glute issues. So a lot of people that come to me with hip problems are usually gluteal muscle uh, issues where the, the glutes, particularly in this phase there, these glute muscles out here are getting overworked. And so sometimes it's not necessarily hamstring, but more so up in the glutes is the problem. And that's why this is so important because without looking at this, I know where you're sore, I know where you're tight, but I don't know how you got that way. This shows me how you got to where you are. So then we move down to the feet. And one thing I noticed with your feet is that on, the, well, on your left hand side, you actually toe in, which is nothing new to you that you know. On the right hand side, you are almost straight forward. Normal is to be a little bit towed out. Uh, depends upon you know, the research you look at, but a little bit towed out on both sides. And so this correlates with what we saw in the physical evaluation where your, the neck of your femur, your hip alignment basically is rotated in a little different position than normal and tends to rotate your entire lower legs inward. That can affect the alignment of your pelvis and your low back contributing to some of those upper back issues that you've faced over the years and also contribute to how the, the back and the pelvis move when you run or in your case how it gets a little bit restricted and because of the restricted motion in your spine it causes you then to need to get the motion somewhere else because the body's going to get the motion somehow it's just going to go looking for the to the neighbors to give the motion if the spine and the pelvis don't give it when this leg comes behind you, that should be the point where you have the most curve in your low back, and it just gets kind flat. of pat flat. It looks flat. Right. Now, when you're compressed at mid stance, that should be the point where you have the least amount of curve, and yours almost goes the other way in that upper lumbar spine, and the lower lumbar spine is just completely flat. So your running asks a lot of your back. First thing I would start out with would be. Uh, not chasing the small things. I don't, I don't care so much about the, the position of the foot, that structural. I care more about kind of setting up the foundation of how you run. I'm still not 
100% convinced that I'm going to dramatically change the style in which you run. You're a longer distance runner. You have that look to you. You're, you're, other than the abruptness of the pelvis, pelvic motion, you're smooth and fluid. You get good arm extension. Um, I care actually more about reestablishing the, the, the foundation of strength and control of strength that we need for you to actually utilize while you run. And that's part of the problem is, is that, that it's not there. So I can start to play with it a little bit, but until that strength comes back, there's not much for you to, you know, to, go, in, to go grab and use. So it's a common problem with runners as well because a lot of runners don't want to spend time in the gym. And uh, that's why I'll give you some things that you can do at home. You don't have to go into a gym and use regular gym equipment. Some of it's just uh, movements that you use standing in front of a mirror, and we'll go ahead and uh, teach you some of those today. Okay, and then would you recommend um, down the road, maybe you know, three to six months after I follow this uh, exercise program, coming back and having a reevaluation done? It depends on the individual. A lot of times when I can give them the strategies uh, to change their gait, I don't need to pull them back again and reevaluate it unless they're having problems. Uh, typically what drives people to come in uh, will be pain of some sort or a real limitation in their running performance. And they'll get immediate feedback from that as they make the changes of, gee, do I feel better and can I run better? If those things happen, they don't need me. Uh, until they want to take it to the next level of performance. If it's not changing it, then I like to bring them back and, and reassess whether they actually followed through with the correct change in running style and did they actually do their exercises and the other things that influence their gait. So basically, I'll see the results on my own. Yes. You know, if I start getting stronger, I'm not going to have this aches and pains I have. And Absolutely. So, okay, well, thank Absolutely. you very much. I'm looking forward to getting the exercises, and um, I certainly learned so much. I've been running for 24 years, and over the past four years, I would say, as I've gotten a little bit older, the injuries have started to creep in, sure. and I can see why just yes. from looking at this gait analysis. So remember, you're never too young or too old to start an active lifestyle. Getting fit can change your life, so let's get moving. <laughs>